Hello, mathematicians. My name is Matt DeSorbo. I'm doing the algebra lessons for Skew the Script. Today, in our second lesson in the series, we'll be talking about domain and range, specifically how it relates to different tax systems. So without further ado, let's skew it. Welcome in to Skew the Script Lesson 2 in our algebra series. Today we'll be talking about domain and range, specifically with taxes. So you might have not had to pay taxes yet, but I promise one day you will. Um, something that citizens pay every year uh, to the government. Um, you work hard all year long for your money, and then the government will take a chunk of it at the end. But taxes are important. They uh, allow the government to spend on a variety of different things and sort of make our society better as a whole. Naturally, there's a lot of discussion as to what the best way to tax a nation is, what way is the most fair. Today, we'll be talking about a couple of different uh, systems. The first and most simplest is a lump sum tax. Everyone simply pays the same amount. The second is a flat tax, so everyone pays a specific percent of their income. And the third is a progressive tax, so everyone pays a percent of their income, but that percentage increases uh, for higher incomes. Now, our key analysis is going to be using domain and ranges to try to determine and discuss which of the tax systems is the most fair. If you'd like to follow along with today's discussion, go to the link below, check out the guided notes, print them out, uh, download them, and uh, walk through as, as we go through the lesson. So we're going to start with our introduction to domain and range. We have a chart here, um, and our domain is just all the x values or inputs in a function. I've drawn the orange line here to show the x, the x axis. Um, the Minimum or the the uh, one part of the domain is the lowest x value, so the x value furthest or the value furthest to the left in the function. Um, in this case, that's negative two, and then the highest x value is the other part of the domain, so it's the x value to the furthest right, and that in this case it's three. And the range is uh, the all of the y values, so outputs in our function. Here it's in purple, um, drawn the y-axis in purple. The first part of the range is the lowest y value, so the furthest down. And in this case, it's negative two. And the second y value is uh, the second part of the range is the highest y value, the value furthest up. In this case, it is four. Um, here we're using interval notation, so you can see I have bracket negative two, three for the domain. Um, this is a nice way to really succinctly give the uh, domain and range. Um, this interval notation means all x values uh, are between negative two and three. So everything between negative two and three is in our domain. Similarly, for the range, it means all y values are between negative two and four. So that's kind of what this notation means. Um, we can also write this in terms of inequalities instead of intervals. So here I've rewritten a domain that we're saying negative two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to three, it means the same thing. Um, again, x values are between negative two and three. And for the y uh, values, we can write it like this. Y values are between negative two and four. Uh, a good way to remember, this is kind of tricky to think which is which, is domain x is, is range y. The way that I like to think of it, domain x, I sort of think it sounds, domain x is a cool name. It sounds like area 51 or something. So I like to think of like aliens and domain x or something like that. Whereas range and y, if you combine those, it kind of sounds like rangy or like a steer or a bull or cattle or something like that, something on the range, something rangy. So hopefully that helps you. It might be a quirky way to remember, but it's, it's always helped me. Um, we can uh, kind of refine our discussion of domain and range by talking about inclusivity versus exclusivity. So what, what that means in, in the, the context of, of domain and range. In this case, when we have a colored in endpoint, that's gonna mean the function is inclusive, it includes the endpoint, and an empty uh, dot means the function is exclusive, it excludes the endpoint. Um, in this case, we have the domain and range uh, here, negative, two, negative one to two for domain, zero to two for range, um, and the two endpoints are filled in, so it's an inclusive function. Um, that means that X can reach negative one and two because those endpoints are filled in, and here we have it in inequality notation, uh, means the same thing as our interval notation. Um, however, if we have non-filled in endpoints, so two empty circles, uh, in this case, we have a slightly different notation. Um, we have parentheses instead of brackets. That means that X does not quite reach negative one and two. So it gets very close, uh, doesn't reach it. That excludes the endpoint um, with our inequality uh, uh, sort of syntax or format. We just don't include that line under. We just say negative one is less than X is less than two. It doesn't quite reach the endpoints. Similarly, we can mix and match. So for the domain here, um, uh, 
sorry, yeah, for the domain here, we filled in the dot on the left. So in this case, the uh, lower bound of the domain is inclusive. X can reach negative one, but it doesn't reach two. So we have that parentheses. And again, we have this written in inequality notation. Um, so we can talk now about uh, discrete and continuous functions and how that relates to domain and ranges. In this case, we have discrete function on the left. We just have a bunch of discrete points and we have a, uh, the domain is very clearly defined. In this case, it's just four values, negative one, zero, one, and two, because we just have four points in our function. Whereas continuous uh, is sort of a range of values instead of specific values. You can see we have that on the right. Uh, we have a domain from negative one to two. And again, uh, note that the uh, endpoint on the left is not inclusive, it's exclusive. So we have a filled in, uh, an empty circle and uh, a parenthesis for our uh, left-hand side of, of the domain. Um, finally, we can turn to infinity. So you've heard of infinity. It basically means everything or, you know, infinite beyond. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about those more later. Um, and we're going to talk about these in terms of taxes. So as mentioned at the onset of this video, um, each citizen pays uh, money each year to the government. This is what a tax is. And although it's never fun to pay money in taxes, it goes towards good things, maintaining roads and schools and, and all sorts of stuff that the government uses to better society. So we're going to focus specifically on income tax. There's a lot of different taxes, but we're going to focus on sort of the main one. Um, and again, just rehashing the three systems we talked about at the start of the video, Lump sum tax, everyone pays the same amount. Flat tax, everyone pays the same percent. Progressive tax, everyone pays a percent, but that percent increases as you get more income. Um, so starting off with the lump sum tax here, we're saying everyone pays $5,000. And we can plot um, how much everyone pays. We have income on the x-axis. So income is how much you make in a year. And on the y-axis, we have the amount of taxes paid. And it's a straight line and we can fill out the domain and the range. So our domain is the lowest x value, so the furthest left. That's going to be zero, x equals zero, and the highest value for this right. That's kind of weird because we don't see the end of the graph. We can keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. This goes essentially to infinity, right? It goes on forever. So we have Buzz Lightyear here saying to infinity and beyond, and we actually can't reach infinite dollars. So we put the infinity sign that's sideways eight, but we use eight, eight parentheses. The range is a bit easier. The y values are the up and down. Um, in this case, there's just one y value. It's 5,000. So the range is equal to, to 5,000. Um, so again, we have our lump sum tax, we have our domain and range. We can look at our flat tax now in orange in the dotted line. So here's an example of everyone paying 12% of their income. We've, we've char charted the line here. Our domain again is the same, it's zero to infinity. Uh, what is our range? Well, the lowest Y value, the furthest Y value down is zero and that's an inclusive endpoint. So we have a, a bracket and the highest Y value up. Again, we can keep going up and up and up. It goes to infinity and beyond. So we, we include uh, infinity as the range for the flat tax. The progressive tax, um, again, we kind of has this curve shape. We plotted it in green. So again, this is where the percent paid increases with income. The more you make, the higher percent you pay. And again, this has the same range as uh, the um, flat tax because the lowest value is zero and the highest value is infinity. So let's take a second to think about what happens to the range of these tax payments when we just restrict the domain to different income levels. So we say you can only, you know, you only have a certain amount of, of income. And that brings us to our discussion for the day. We'll be looking at the three tax systems we've discussed in a real life example. The federal poverty line for individuals is currently defined as $12,800 per year. We've drawn it here on the chart and we can restrict the domain of our tax chart to individuals below this poverty line, which we've done here and zooming in a bit to give us a better picture uh, yields this. So a question for you to answer is to look at three, these three tax plans for individuals below the poverty line and visually estimate the range in taxes paid by individuals in this scenario. So below the poverty line, poverty line. so for individuals paying lump sum, flat, or a progressive tax. On the other end of the spectrum, returning to our main chart, we can think about managers at a specific company. Generally, they're paid based on performance, hard work, and sales. Their salaries uh, can range from $100,000 for lower performing managers to up to $120,000 for top performing managers. Uh, in a similar vein, we'll restrict uh, the domain of our chart to the possible managerial salaries, which we've done in this chart uh, and zooming in to get a better picture, it yields us uh, uh, this uh, kind of larger image. 
another question for you to answer on your own is looking at each tax plan and visually estimating the range in taxes paid by the managers at this company under a progressive flat and lump sum system. Uh, finally, putting it all together, um, considering your answers to the, two, to the two previous questions, let's look at all these three tax plans one final time. And the main discussion point today is which of these plans do you think is the most fair and why? Um, when you uh, respond to this and discuss with your classmates, make sure to include uh, your estimated ranges for the impoverished, those below the poverty line, and the company managers in your answer. That's all for today. We'll see you the next. We'll see you next time on Skew the Script.